the first part of this is really going to be um, just talking about some of the history behind mental health awareness. I thought it would be cool to share some of that information with you all. Um, talk about some stats in relation to where um, things are at with like COVID-19 right now in mental health. Um, I'm going to share some of my experience with mental health issues and then also um, go into just like what practicing self-love means to me. Um, might be a little philosophical, but um, hoping that that'll lead to a really solid open discussion at the end um, where we can all share from our own experiences. So I'm gonna kick us off. Um, and really the intended purpose of this talk is to encourage um, vulnerable conversations, um, especially as we overcome challenges like the one we're going through right now with COVID-19. Um, so I'm hoping that it'll either encourage you to be vulnerable about your experiences or um, to be open to other people's vulnerability. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the agenda I outlined on slide one. So first off, um, mental health awareness was actually started in 1949, um, which was really surprising to me. I didn't realize it was that far back um, by an organization called Mental Health America. And um, the purpose from the start was to reduce the stigma around having conversations like this. Um, each year, uh, Mental Health America puts out a theme and with their partner organizations um, comes up with like a toolkit for it or some type of um, focus. So this year's focus is um, tools to thrive. And I have a link here. I'm going to share out the deck with everyone afterward if you want to check out the site. Um, these were a few of the main components of this year's theme. Um, was really around providing resources for owning your feelings, um, finding the positive after loss, creating healthy routines, and connecting with others. Um, so here are just some fun facts that I wanted to share. Um, one that I thought was particularly interesting was this one where during the week, Americans watch an average of two and a half hours of TV per day, but only spend half an hour per day socializing. Um, I thought that was particularly interesting, especially going through like the no tech days and stuff and how we need technology right now to be able to communicate with one another. So I wonder how that stat is changing over time. Um, so this is a really important point that I wanna get across today. Um, is that while one in five people will experience a mental health illness during their lifetime, um, everyone faces challenges throughout their life, whether it's um, loss of a loved one, um, going through a breakup, um, going through something like a pandemic, which we've never gone through before in ridiculous times like this. Um, we all have things that come up in our lives that can lead to um, just mental health issues. And I think society tends to paint like people with mental health issues as like a fringe character, like the Joker. Um, but it's really all sorts of people. And I, I just outlined a few different ones here. Um, the person in the top left is someone I um, really admire. Her name is Nikki Kimball. She is an ultra marathon runner. Um, there's this really great documentary about her on uh, Netflix called Finding Traction. And she struggles with depression too, um, which was surprising to me that she could compete at such a high level. Like she'll do these um, 10 day races over like 300 miles, but um, then still be like bedridden from her depression um, throughout stages of her life. Also wanted to highlight um, just like certain professionals that could be experienced burnout right now, whether it's in healthcare or even in our fields um, where more, more people are looking for digital marketing services. We want to support our other business owners. Um, and then just your average everyday person too. So I, I didn't put up a picture of like a thousand different people wanted to call it like a few different personas, but point being anyone can um, be facing mental health issues throughout their life. And um, with the work that Mental Health America and other organizations have been doing, it's cool to see that um, the interest in mental health over time is increasing. To me, that's a positive metric um, because it's it's raising awareness and showing that the awareness that's been raised um, is actually being taken action on, having action taken on on the search side of things where people are learning more about it. Um, so you can see, um, yeah, this is over the last five years, mental health searches have increased. Oh, and I wanted to say, 
Um, I think a lot of that is also due to the increased awareness at college campuses and teaching kids about this earlier on. Um, the percentages, I don't know offhand, but generally speaking for um, students in middle school through um, college are a lot more susceptible to mental health issues. Um, and that kind of gets back to what Linda was talking about, about just not being taught the tools. Um, and with this raised awareness, more kids are being taught the tools to speak openly about it. Um, and then, so coming to where we are now, um, over the last 12 months, this is a graph in the US of online counseling service searches um, that's reached a peak at the beginning of May. Um, also, how to reduce stress has reached a peak um, at the beginning of May. So a very pertinent time to be talking about mental health issues um, as we continue, continue in Minnesota to be in shelter in place um, with the uncertainty ahead. And so I wanted to relate it back to our work um, in digital marketing. This is an interesting stat that um, Linda had in a presentation that Megan attended a while back from a 2019 fishbowl survey. And it's that 65% of advertising and PR professionals suffer from job burnout. Um, and I think that's due to the um, high caliber that we have for our work and needs to serve clients, especially in a time like this, the stat is likely higher. Um, while we, we hold ourselves to such a high standard because we need to um, when we're serving other clients' brands, that can come with other challenges um, in terms of expectations. And I, I kind of get into this more in my uh, How to Avoid Burnout blog that I wrote, if you want to check that out, a little self-plug. But um, it's, it's basically, um, very important to our, our industry because how, how can we have, um, this is the thought that came up to me, the question is like, how can we have conversations around mental health without our work to be perceived any less valuable um, and without losing trust? And I think it really comes down to, um, this TED talk is really awesome by Brene Brown. Um, it's called The Power of Vulnerability. And in her decade of research, um, she, Brene Brown sa says that a sense of worthiness is what distinguishes people who have a strong sense of love and belonging from those who do not. And those who believe they are worthy have the courage to be imperfect. Um, and I really like the, the part where it says the courage to be imperfect um, because the root of the word Cœur is a it's a French word and it's actually a Latin based word cool that means heart and so it literally translates to the heart to be imperfect. Um, so I want to demonstrate that today and talk a little bit about my story and like some of the things that I've been struggling with um, and a lot of it's to do with identity um, and just major life changes that happened last year. But before I get into that, uh, I don't know if anyone from Cloudverse is on, but I had a little like get to know Aaron slide on here, um, just in case I haven't met anyone on the team yet. But basically, I am a Turkish American, um, born in Minnesota. My, my dad is from Ankara, Turkey. My mom is from Two Harbors, Minnesota. So two completely different worlds. Um, like Ankara's population is the millions. Two Harbors is in like the 2000s and very different cultures. But they, they've had a really big impact on my life um, and my identity. Um, Another couple of things on here, I don't put these to humble brag. Um, I want to make that clear. I put these on here because they are really where um, the root of some of my like identity issues and mental health issues have come from. I'm a very um, achiever type of, of person, especially in athletics. And um, a lot of my mental health issues have stemmed from just not being able to perform at the level in athletics that I used to, um, and especially with soccer, where when I was two years old, I had a soccer ball at my feet. And a big part of my Turkish identity was through soccer. Um, like I would follow all the Turkish teams Saturday mornings and just not being able to like compete at the level one that I used to. And then also um, like have, have that connection to my culture is what it felt like at the time. Um, through soccer was something that was really challenging for me. Um, so yeah, I, I am talking openly about this now. Um, 
and I I really just want to put it out there for everyone. Um, you don't have to talk openly if you don't want to, but I'm hoping later in this conversation um, we can get into like things that you do to practice self love is really like the direction that I've headed through this experience. But basically, um, over over the last year, I, I've struggled with anxiety and depression. A lot of that is to do with um, like my expectations of myself being extremely like hard on myself like I'm very I'm not competitive with other people but I'm competitive with who I was before and if I'm not achieving at the caliber that I want then it just gets in my head um and then also I went through a, a major life change um lost uh, a person that I was like we were going to get married together and we're dating for four years and living together um and that all changed uh, and it was a really hard experience to go through so um, I just want to talk about some of my symptoms. So this trouble with sleeping through the night uh, really accelerated when I saw my ex-girlfriend with um, a guy from our co-ed soccer team, and I hadn't been able to play on that team since I got injured. So it was really just like a rapid adrenaline rush of, um, like I was still kind of going through the grieving stage of like breaking up and then seeing that she had already moved on was a pretty big chop to the throat. Um, and then that just kind of led into these other symptoms, I think, um, around like overanalyzing the past. Um, I call it this like squirrel operated brain where I was trying to distract myself, like a lot of the times with social media um, and then experiencing mood swings. Like I'd feel really good sometimes and then get really down in the dumps and hard on myself. And it just wasn't who I was. Um, it was really, like the most like claustrophobic time I think I've ever experienced in my life. Um, just because I, I, I couldn't figure out what the problem was. Um, and that's kind of where I started this process of researching what was going on with me. Um, cause I have always been in like a very like happy go lucky person. So I, I started looking into it, um, looking through like the symptoms for each of the, these different me mental health disorders. And it really came down to, I was experiencing some symptoms across a few of these um, and decided, you know what, I'm going to go reach out to a professional and like really get diagnosed and bite the cost. Um, that was something that I, I was trying to figure this out on my own for so long. And I just got so tired of trying to figure it out. I decided like, I'm going to go all in, um, like my health is the number one priority and um, decided to reach out to a psychiatrist. So he recommended um, after one consultation, basically that I should try um, sleeping medication. And he thought that that would get to the heart of the problem um, and really like cut off the snake at its head. And it just made me very groggy um, as a lot of sleeping meds do. They have different results for different people. And it was kind of like back to the drawing board after that. Um, I. I wanted to try other medications, but I also didn't want to keep incurring the costs. And I felt like what I really needed to do was um, talk to someone objective about it. So I, I decided to try out a better help. Um, I did a lot of research on like online counseling services and I really appreciated better help because they're able to um, provide me with someone that could deal with like multicultural experience, um, could have conversations around identity too, which is important to me. And then um, the other things that were going on. Um, and through the counseling, I, I did ultimately find like the struggles with my identity um, was basically like I, and I think this gets back to why I am very interested in marketing um, and just psychology in general. Um, when I was younger, I, I used to get bullied a lot um, for being Turkish and we would get called things like a terrorist or like a bloody Turk or um, just things like that. And like I know now, like that's just people repeating what their parents say or what they're hearing from their friends. Um, but that stuff really just digged at me because like one, they didn't ever know any other Turkish people. And then I would be the first one. And that's like their immediate response it was really hard to have to always speak on behalf of Turkish people, especially when I was like mostly living in Minnesota for my, for my entire life. Um, and then, so I really honed in on like, I, I wanted to be a good ambassador for Turkish culture. 
um, and like reposition that in people's minds. So like, I don't know what they're reading on, on or like hearing from their parents or on TV, um, but I wanted to be like a positive, like Turkish person that they would encounter. Um, and then I just realized through this conversation and talking openly about it with my counselor um, that I was really like caring about what other people thought about me and not um, as much caring about like my own self-worth and my own opinion of myself. Um, so I, I just have like gone through a process of trying to um, reframe my identity for myself. Like I don't see things as much of a binary as much as like I, I have elements of these different things and they make up who I am. Um, and even though I'm an achiever type of person like and have high expectations of myself and want people to appreciate like my cultures and all that brings, um, I am ultimately care more about like my opinion of myself now more. And I don't say that in a def defensive way. I say it in like a very self-empowering way. Um, but yeah, and so all of these changes, like I, I went through this process um, and it's really turned into this process of like self-love. And that's kind of like where the, the title of this presentation comes from for me. Um, I, Will Smith is a funny dude. He, he's, a, I really like, like him as an actor and he has like some motivational speeches on YouTube. One in particular that I really like is this one on self-discipline. Um, and how we see self-discipline as taking something away from ourselves. Um, but I believe that self-discipline is the definition of self-love, he says. Self-love is letting go of immediate pleasures for long-term happiness. Um, and this is just kind of like this, l listening to this and just like my own experiences have kind of led to this practice that I do on a daily basis around self-love. Um, and it's come from a lot of trial and error. Um, but basically it's around like intentionally practicing gratitude, um, being vulnerable like I am right now, sharing my experience openly, um, getting fresh air and staying active is really important, I think. And then um, approaching things with a beginner's mindset. It also includes letting go of the past. Like there are these things that have happened in the past that whether someone's opinion or um, just like achievements that I've had and just like let those go and just be open to the newness of right now. Um, and then lastly, just believing in our connectedness. Um, I have gone through phases of my life of being like atheist and like not believing in a higher power versus like being agnostic and believing there could be a higher power. and. I'm a lot more okay with just like ambigu ambiguity now. Um, and I don't mean to turn this into a religious thing, but I, I feel like there is like a connectedness with all of us. Um, and that connectedness is really important, especially in times like this, where like we have the technology to be able to communicate with people across the state and the country, or even like in another part of the city, um, just to stay connected when our like social, spa social spaces aren't open. I think is super important and um, like what we're experiencing right now just really validates that for me. Um, so I like I didn't want to just like say I'm doing all these things like I want to practice what I'm what I'm kind of preaching here um, and really try to make adjustments in my life that will help lead to this like self love. Um, so that really came to like this multivariant testing that I started. <laughs> Um, and I just want to call it a few things like the, the trouble sleeping through the night. Um, I attribute a lot of that to things like drinking excess coffee, um, snacking after eight o'clock, looking at screens after nine, just making those adjustments, um, and being a little more self-disciplined has helped immensely. I went from like two to four hours of sleep a night at my like worst point and getting up like not even exaggerating like eight times a night to like seven to nine hours of sleep a night um, and only getting up like once or twice has been a massive adjustment um and this isn't like an end state too i want to call out like this has been a process and i'm enjoying the process a lot more now um but it has been like something i have to do and practice like daily and intentionally do um and then another one that has really helped um, 
some of you know this, I've quit drinking alcohol. It wasn't like I was going out and like partying every weekend or, or every night even. Um, but my friend Parker was also going through a similar experience, um, broke up with his ex of like four years. And we have just made the decision for the next year to go sober, um, try to focus on other things. And um, that's been really positive on just like my mental health, my mood swings are way less frequent, um, especially like those would come after a night of drinking. Um, and then also my physical health has improved quite a bit too. Like my, my hamstrings aren't as tight as they used to be. And I attribute that to alcohol dehydrating my system and then ultimately like causing re-injury. So I think that we do have the power um, to make changes in our life that like help our own mental health. Um, and I don't want to go through all this stuff here, but these are just some of the things that have helped me. Um, and I don't say that in a way to be like a perfectionist. Um, I think the most important thing is just to be like self-aware, like Linda was calling out and knowing like I, um, my, my self-awareness like leads to the self-love and that self-love helps me be more for other people in my life, which is really important to me. Like being, uh, coming up and being an uncle, um, like being a, a good son to my mom and dad, um, being there for my friends. That stuff is really important to me. And um, this is self-awareness and practice of self-love has really helped um, me do that more for them. Um, so I want to I want to loop it back and like how I, I think that this is so foundational to our core values at Agurian. Um, I think like the first one that started on there, living honest, like our true selves are our best selves. It's important to come to work and really um, be your true self with all that is to offer. Um, and I'm super excited about things like the culture committee um, and the employee resource groups that we're going to be setting up. Um, to just like have more conversations around how we can make sure that everyone's bringing them best self, their, their best selves to work. Um, enjoying the journey is also really important. I think there is a period where I was just waiting for like this end state to come up, um, but not really enjoying like the in-betweens. And now I'm much more appreciative of the in-betweens. And actually like working at Agurian was one of the things that has really like provided me with a lot of this um like not provided me with the self-worth but i want to say like has given me so much gratitude um and that's that's like derived from things like balancing work life too like being able to take a couple weeks off and go visit my family in turkey and just kind of like regroup um and then also i feel like i'm able to drive more success and i feel like when everyone prioritizes their mental health they can do more for their jobs they can do more for the people in their lives um so just a couple more slides bear with me <laughs> um i and i just wanted to call out some of the things that i've noticed over the past couple months um like the first thing is empathy and compassion with clients um just in the communication i've seen um across like all team members i can't think of anyone that hasn't done this and with being able to really empathize with where um, clients are at right now, and even coworkers, the way the way that we share things over Slack, and even though we're all um, apart, like we're alone together, um, and then also like just the gratitude and empowerment um, of the space that we're in, I think is is really important to call out. Like companies are seeking digital services um, in certain sectors more than ever. Um, and just being there and being able to help like the webinar that Ben and Jason put on. Um, and then also like, not only that, but just like supporting an organization like Stray Dog, um, I think is it's so cool to see. Um, and then lastly, just like re leading through the uncertainty, no one really knows for certain what's coming up with all of this. Um, but there's a quote I really liked from um, Whitney Moore's presentation at Flourish Conference. She said, um, being positive in, in a negative situation isn't naive, it's leadership. And I think there's a lot of leaders at Agurian. Um, and I think that makes me a better leader. And I'm really excited to be a part of this um, group of people because of that. Um, so I wanted to loop, loop it back to like things that I think we can do to help others. Um, 
leaping, first of all, like we do this with clients all the time, leap and reap. Um, this is not only with clients, but I think um, just listening, empathizing, affirming, and partnering with the people in our personal lives is really important right now. Um, this second point was from something that Jasmine put up on Facebook, and I hope she doesn't mind me calling this out, but um, her friend passed away um, named Asto, and she had this really great idea um, in honor of her friend to have people reach out to someone they haven't connected with in a while. Um, and she called it the Asso challenge. And Asso was really good at just like staying in touch with people um, no matter where he was in the world. And I think with the, the communication technology we have right now, it's really great to just be able to like send a message to someone that's in another state, another city, just someone you haven't seen in a while and say like, hey, how are you doing? Like, how's your family doing? Let them know you're thinking of them. And then um, I think just like random acts of kindness are, are always well appreciated, well, whether it's doing something for people you know or for strangers, um, that kind of stuff can go a long way. So those were um, really the, the main things I wanted to call out today. Um, I, I'm hoping this has kind of sparked some interest or things that have um, happened in your lives that we can kind of kick off a discussion with. Um, but before that, I just wanted to say thank you all for your support over the past year. Um, just even in the little times, like the little laughs, the foosball games, um, all the support around mental health awareness has been very, very much appreciated. Um, and I feel like a better person for all the stuff that I've gone through over the last year. And that's largely due to the support group we have here in the, the culture. Yeah. Um, so I will leave it at that. I have some questions for discussion, but gonna go back to the Hangout to see if there's any um, questions or comments that anyone wanted to share. Well, I, I would just say, I really appreciate you, Aaron, doing this. Um, Number one, um, taking a role within a Gurian to help just bring up mental health awareness um, as, as an item that we can uh, focus on more holistically as an organization um, throughout um, not only Mental Health Awareness Month, but throughout the year. So I, I, I think that's something that um, I'm really grateful for you in doing and um, really appreciative of you just opening yourself up and sharing so much of yourself and your story, I think that type of, um, you know, openness is what really endears people to you um, and makes um, not only what you're communicating that much more um, valuable, but also personable. So, um, and it's not an easy thing to do. So I, I really appreciate, um, you know, you being vulnerable and, and sharing um, your experience. I was also really uh, pleased just to hear that Agurian, uh, you know, has helped play a role in just your own um, evolution as, as, a, as a person and as an individual. And um, I take a lot of pride in that in um, not only for myself, but just the types of people that we have here and the, the organizational structure that we have. And, um, you know, I, I think Agreeing is different in a lot of ways, but I've never worked for another company before. So it's hard for me to like <laughs> think about what, um, other cultures are like. Um, so I just really appreciate getting that perspective from people like yourself. Um, nothing is more important, and I'd say this to the team, than just continue to work on yourself. That's a lifelong journey. Um, you know, a lot of these big questions that, you know, you're talking about around, you know, like the meaning of life and, you know, is there a God and like what, like that will be there forever, right? I mean, that's all the kind of questions that you're probably getting an answer to, but, um, you know, continue to work on yourself where you can start applying your, you know, multivariate testing and actually see improvement in life um, is, re is really important. So that continued work on yourself, I think, is absolutely um, fantastic. A um, couple other quick things. Uh, I think a big um, stressor for me and where I get anxiety is just like lack of control and just realizing how little control we really do have of so much um, of our life and uh, to try and be at peace with that. Uh, is is really important. I think just getting back to the present moment. Um, John Cabot Zinn um, has been talking about um, that for probably thirty years. He's one of the first uh, people in in you know in the West to actually talk about um, uh, 
mindfulness and bring the present moment. And he brought that to the University of Massachusetts um, uh, and actually applied it scientifically to patients um, at the hospital there. So uh, I'd recommend um, checking his stuff out. Um, John Kabat-Zinn um, actually went to New York and uh, was with him and about 30 other people for four days, a retreat that I did in my early 30s that I'd be happy to talk about sometime, which was really amazing. Um, and the last thing I'll say is, uh, it's fantastic you're doing this now too, because when kids get brought into the picture, um, so much of your focus is on them. Um, it, you shouldn't, it shouldn't stop, it just makes it more difficult. You don't have the, the time necessarily to, to focus and to, to evolve necessarily as a human, I think, as, as much as you do when you don't have um, kids involved and taking so much of that time. So I kudos to you and to everyone else for continuing these personal journeys. I'll stop. Thank, thanks so much, Colin. Um, could you send out, was it John Cobbett Zinn in the comment section? I just wanna make sure yep. I get his name down correctly. Yep. yep. Um, it looks like, it looked like Spencer had some comments you wanted to share. Um, first of all, thank you very much for sharing this and being so open. I think that's, especially like right now, but even in general, like in the advertising and like agency world, um, this stuff just doesn't get talked about at all. Um, like to see the growth that you had and like the types of searches around, um, like mental health and and um, like getting help for all that kind of stuff is is great to see. But um, like definitely Augurian, like Colin, part of what you said is like you haven't worked anywhere else, so it's it's hard to see. Like um, is is Augurian like really great at this? And I'm telling you, it's a night and day difference. Um, I've worked at a couple different agencies, um, and not only does this not get talked about at all. Um, but I, uh, I actually have had a Zoom call with like past employees and stuff. And whenever they ask what Algerians like, the first thing that I've said, and I'm sure it's been like kind of a, a uh, they've kind of thought it's offensive, but I've been like, everyone there is unbelievably nice. Like <laughs> people at Algerian actually care about um, making their employees better people and like helping them out outside of work. Um, and it's not such a like competitive atmosphere like you see at a lot of other agencies um it's like we're actually trying to to better each other and help each other out um which is definitely out of the ordinary um and something that i like call out constantly um it's it's honestly the first thing i think of with algerian um when people ask me um what it's been like moving from one agency to another um so i've i've definitely appreciated that the other thing that i wanted to um I guess there's two other things and I don't want to take up too much time, but two things that I wanted to note. So I, the whole identity thing really resonated with me, um, mainly because like in my life, I have very much a, anything that has happened to me or like explaining my identity is I have a single time in my life where there's a pre and a post, um, where I was in a moped accident. Um, I was told I wouldn't be able to like do any fit hard physical activity after that ever again. So everything that I did before that accident, everything after is basically like completely different. And I've had a big change in identity. I used to play a lot of soccer. I used to snowboard and I used to run. Um, and now I can't do either of those three things. Um, so I had to really like morph the things that make me happy and the things that I can focus on for like progression and, and like filling my time and that kind of stuff. So that was definitely a big, um, I kind of resonated with you along the like kind of sports thing and like a big thing for me is finding progression and stuff. Um, it's always been sports because I feel like that was the easiest thing. So I've definitely had to morph my hobbies and my focus on like focusing my energy on stuff. Um, the other thing, um, I really like the like one that you had with the bubbles that are like, what are the, the like main things that you've, you've focused on? Um, the one thing for me that I would add to that, I, I really resonated with a lot of those. Um, one for me, both in like both at work and outside of work, um, is don't forget to celebrate. Um, I've had a discussion with this um, with a couple of other managers. I think Austin, um, Austin, Ben, and Jason. I talked a little bit about the other day. Um, is like especially. Um, 
I would say especially our generation, but I, it definitely happens in other generations as well. And in the marketing world where it's always like, what's the next best thing? Like, okay, we did this thing. What's the next thing that we can do? What's the next goal that I need to set? Um, and we forget to really like celebrate the things that we've been working so hard and doing. Um, I, I think, especially with our generation where we're like expecting a, a, a promotion every year and a raise and a, it's like, you're not, uh, you don't have the time to really like sit there and say, okay, I finally got this. I deserve this. What did I put into this? Um, and both, like I mentioned inside and outside of work of like the things that you're doing. Um, that's definitely a big thing that I've, I've struggled with. Um, I'm always kind of looking for what's the next best thing and how can I improve? Um, so really like taking the time to stop, celebrate. I did it for when I got the job at Agurian. Um, Christine got me some balloons for celebrate. We like set up our kitchen to like really like sit there, appreciate the things. Um, and like um, then like appreciate what you have right now and what you work towards before you start setting new goals and such. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you both so much for sharing your experience and just kind of how, how you um, reacted to the, the, things, the things I was saying. Um, yeah, it, re it really means a lot to, to hear your thoughts and like additional comments. So it looks like um, Jasmine, you had something you want to add? Yeah, that first, thank you, Aaron. That was really meaningful. And um, I'll be thinking about your presentation for a long time. Thank you for sharing. I really appreciate working in a place that is so open. Um, I just wanted to add one little thing from like what Spencer was saying. Um, as like, you know, I lost one of my friends last week and I think that like celebrate or like acknowledging the lows and letting yourself like feel that and go through that is just as important as acknowledging the highs. Like this was my friend who I went to high school and graduated college with. And it's like, I very much had this attitude of like, I can just keep pushing through. I'm just going to get through it. Like, it's just a thing that happened. I hadn't seen him in a while. So like, don't let it affect me. But I realized like, you don't lose friends that often in your life. So like, let yourself feel it. And um, it's a good opportunity going back to like what Linda said. It's a good opportunity for self-awareness. Um, and self-consciousness and just kind of trying to learn more about about yourself um, and and how you process uh, those especially hard emotions. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's like the openness to experience like all the emotions of life. Um, that was that was one of the things on the slide. It was like owning your emotions. I think especially as guys, like you tend to be taught to like push things aside and um, just kind of like deal with it um, and just move on. But it was it was interesting. There's like three thousand different words to describe emotions too, rather than just saying like good or bad. It's like, oh, like just like recognizing that something is what it is, um, and just being like comfortable in that moment. I think is really important. Um, well, th thank you all for sharing your thoughts. Um, yeah, Lydia, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say like thanks everyone for sharing, and for me a big thing that helps whenever I go through things is just the feelings of isolation and thinking that you're the only one who's ever gone through something. And I know even just hearing Aaron and Spencer talk about sports, I mean, Aaron, I know we've had brief conversations about that, but just like the identity around that and like the feeling of value around that. And I know like for me, like the additional monkey wrench of being like a teenage girl is thrown into there. And so it's like the way that you look when you perform really well as an athlete and the way you're supposed to look like as a woman or like, rarely the same thing and so that just like led to a bunch of identity stuff as well and so furthermore I just think talking about things you find that you're rarely ever like the only person who's ever experienced them and so I'm happy that we have a workplace culture where we like can kind of combat that isolation together. Yeah absolutely I think the the shared experience is really important um just being able to see that other people have gone through similar things and and relate and empathize through that um, if there aren't any other questions or, or things to call out, I did have a few just topics of discussion. We have about um, 18 minutes left. We also don't have to take the entire time, but um, I did want to ask and open it up to the group. Like, what is 
one area of your life that you're practicing self-love during social distancing? Or um, who is someone that you haven't connected with in a while that you like to connect with um, after kind of hearing this experience? I think Micah said he had a tactical addition. Yes, Micah. Yep. So this is this is just in um, relation to kind of self-experimentation with all the different things that you're doing. So one, and I do a lot of that too, and I really enjoy it. But um, one thing that I found super helpful is I've basically broken down all of my ex like self-experimentation categories like you have, um, but I'll track it over time. And since we're all data people and all love that, you can kind of get a visual map of like, all right, my personal relationships are going really well right now, but maybe I'm not physically doing the things that I need to be doing. So then it's kind of just an ongoing um, cyclical thing of continuing to improve different areas. And if you try and focus too heavily in one area, then it kind of is going to drop off on another area. Um, so that's been really helpful for me to kind of track that over time. And then the other thing that I like to do is have like a... Um, like a monthly um, habit or something that I'm working towards. So instead of adding everything at once, I'll just slowly roll stuff out. <clears throat> That's really cool to hear. I love the tracking idea. Um, do you do you have like a template or something that you'd be interested in sharing out? Um, I, I do have a template that I created. And then I also use a, um, so I created the template and then there was a planner that was that came out that I started using, which is pretty decent too. Cool. Yeah. So I, um, I, I added in the notes as well. I was a really weird kid and uh, I read that Benjamin Franklin did that and I uh, shared with everybody a link to his improvement plan if anyone's interested. Oh, sweet. It didn't work for me when I was 12, but it might work for adults. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And Mike, can you use to track your time? What? <laughs> I have in the past. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Uh, I knew it. Love it. Yeah, I think it's really true. Like when you try to focus on one area of your life, another area can get out of balance too. So it's nice to, I bet it's really nice to be able to track that. So you can see like, oh, like I'm doing a lot of this, but it's taken away from that. Yep. Cool. Um, yeah, anyone have any other thoughts that they wanted to add? Um, otherwise... I can share something. Um, I told you guys this, but I just got a Fitbit. And I know it sounds like such a simple thing, but I've been like holding off on buying one for a long time. And I feel like it has like really changed my life for the better in just the past week that I've had it. Um, like I had no idea how well I was sleeping, how much water I was drinking, simple things like that. But then seeing the data and how it changes it over time has been really helpful, especially when I don't have a schedule. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, I would recommend it. They're on sale, I think. Um, it, it's really helped me. Hmm. That's awesome. Very cool. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have a watch too, Maddie. That's been a really nice way to track my sleep. Um, that was like one of the, the core issues I called out in the presentation. And that's been mm -hmm. like, if, if I do have a, 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 heart, a bad day or something like that, I can usually see like, oh, I just got like, four or five hours of sleep, like don't take it too seriously, just get a good night's sleep and then just like levels me out that way too. Yeah. Cool. Any other thoughts? Um, one thing that I, um, I don't know if this is a thought on like things that I've necessarily, actually I don't think I've been doing this that well, um, but there's a, um, one of the things that I thought really connected between some of the other like um, happiness and, and mental health type things is the social status thing. Um, mm -hmm. I know there's a big piece of that in the the blue zones. Um, if, if I know a lot of you have read uh, that book or I still have Maddie's recipe book that I snagged from her before <laughs> quarantine started, I promise I'll give it back. <laughs> um, but the whole social status thing, I think is really interesting to me. Um, I don't think I've been that great at reaching out to um, I have like my core group of friends that I've known since literally like kindergarten and I play Call of Duty with them every single night. So I talk to them, but I don't think I'm great at like reaching out to to other friends that well. Um, I think the other thing that's really tough too is I know a lot of people who have like 
moved to Minneapolis from other cities. Um, and the whole social status thing is like really tough. And the fact that that's like a big piece of, of that's like focused on a lot within mental health. It's like, um, I feel like that's a thing that I haven't seen a really great like solution for. It's like, okay, I'm, I just moved here. I don't really have any friends. This is supposed to be a part of like my happiness and how I stay mentally healthy. Like, what do I do? Um, just something I thought was really interesting that, um, that I, I see pretty often. Uh, I think it's, it's tough because we're like such creatures of habit and then you get so used to like, I'm similar. Like I just have my like really close group of friends from like, <clears throat> from like kindergarten too. Um, and you just get so used to like hanging out with them. But it, I think it's really important to be just aware of that too. And like, if you see someone that's new in the area, like just be open to maybe like inviting them along with you or something. Like, I think we can all make an extra effort to do that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thank you all for taking the time to listen today and just like share some of your experiences.